talking about the kind of prayer that will allow homes to be restored. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that when children get too way where you can put them in the hands of God and watch God work it out. I'm talking about the kind of prayer that when it gets too big for you, you can turn it over to him and say, God, I know you can handle this. Have I got somebody in here like that? Maybe if I go to the hymn writer, that'll catch a few of y'all and we'll ride with it. The hymn writer put it this way. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? You should never be discouraged if you take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who in all our sorrow share? Somebody looking for a place to holler. Here it is right here. Jesus knows our every weakness. If we'll take it
Good morning, beloveds, and welcome once again to Great Awakenings, the television ministry of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I'm Dr. J.T. Worthy, and once again, I am certainly delighted, privileged, honored, and humbled that you've taken this time to share our television ministry with us. I want to take you now into a service that was recorded right here in the sanctuary of the St. James Church, and my prayer is that the word and music that you hear today, as always, are a source of strength and comfort to get you through your day. Right now, without any further ado, let's go into that service already in progress. The same prophet Jeremiah promised that God would destroy Babylon. And then after he destroyed Babylon, did y'all see this? He says, I will then come back and restore you to the place where you were taken from. Y'all need to catch this. You see, Daniel shows me that when I pray in harmony with the word of God, I don't get caught up in the test, the trials, and the tribulation that I'm going through. When I pray to God, y'all, I understand that the one I'm talking to, this is about to bless somebody, knows the end at the beginning. Y'all missed it. Let me say it one more time. Praying Christians don't get caught up in what they're going through right now. Uh -huh. That's it. Because they understand the God I pray to yeah. already knows what's going to happen. Right. Maybe I need to say it one more again. A praying Christian doesn't lose heart in today's trouble because he knows Monday is going to produce a miracle. Tuesday is going to produce a triumph. Wednesday is going to produce a way out of no way. Friday, oh, y'all ain't talking. Friday is going to produce favor. Is there anybody, I guess I need to give you some scripture. Anybody ever read Isaiah saying, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings like eagle. Run. Is there anybody in here who can say, I've been praying about it. I've been trusting. I've been believing. I've been holding on. And right now, all I have is my faith that if God said it, he will bring it to pass. Right. Because there's something else I see in Daniel in this chapter. Watch this. Not only must a praying Christian pray in harmony with the word of God, but secondly, y'all, a praying Christian is one whose prayers are grounded in the will. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. I'm still right there in the text, y'all. I'm still right there. I'm still right there. Look, 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 look right there at, 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 at verse 3. Because Daniel knew what God promised. Daniel had already heard through Jeremiah that God was going to restore the people. He already knew that God was going to deal with Babylonia. But now, Daniel says that since I know what God says he's going to do, I now need to get myself in a position to receive what God is going to do. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. So let me, let me break it down. Let me break it down. A praying Christian is one who is so confident in what God said yeah. 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 that he doesn't lose heart or worry nope. about how God's going to do it. That's right. That's right. Can I be honest with y'all and y'all won't look at me funny? Well, you can look funny if you want to. It's all right. <laughs> can I tell y'all something? I learned from experience from Washington that that's the place that I miss the mark. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. That, that's the place I miss it. Why? I have no problem trusting that because God said it, he's going to do it. That's not my issue. Uh -huh. My issue is God takes too long for me sometimes. <laughs> Am I by myself? I have no problem with what he said he would do. But my problem, Deacon Dancy, is he does it at the wrong time for me. Why y'all looking at me like that? Because you deal with it too. Half of our stresses, half of our frustration, half of our worries don't come from what God said. It comes from the fact that God doesn't do it when we want it done. 
Amen. 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 After all, we already know that God's, according to God's word, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We know what he can do, yeah. but our struggle is having the faith to trust God's timing That's right. uh -huh. uh, as it relates to getting it done. So watch what Daniel does. Watch right there, Butch, in verse 3, because in verse 3, Daniel says this. Now, I know what God said was going to happen. I read everything Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said this was going to happen, so here's what I'm going to do. Daniel says in verse 3, I will set my face. Over to God. In other words, faith simply says, I'm going to stop looking at what I'm looking at. Yes. And I'm going to start focusing oh, God. on God. I'm going to take my mind off of my will. Why are y'all looking at me like that? And I'm going to start focusing in on his will. I know what I want. Y'all ready? But I'm glad to know he knows what I need. That's right. That's right. That's right. He says, I'm going to set my face over to God, I'm going to seek God. Watch it. I'm going to look for him. I'm going to search for him. How are you going to do it, Daniel? According to verse 3, I'm going to search for him by prayer, mm -hmm. yes. by supplication, by fasting, mm -hmm. by sackcloth and ashes. Are y'all ready for this? This is going to mess you up. Because he says, when I pray unto him, I'm going to start talking to him about the issue. And when I look for supplication, I'm looking for him to supply me with what I need yes. while I'm yes. going through what I'm going through. Yes. Come on, somebody. He says, I'm going to fast, which means i got to deny what I want, yeah. deny how I feel, deny what I think, and say, God, it's you and only you. Watch what he says. And then sackcloth and ashen. So much so, y'all ain't ready. When my trouble comes, I'm not going to stop praying. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. When my hardship comes, I don't give up on him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When my money gets funny, I don't start singing Pope Piddle for me. <laughs> when the doctor give me a bad report, I don't walk around with my head down. But instead, I stand in faith yeah. Yeah. that says, God, you made me. Yeah. God, you know about me. Yeah. You know my uprising. You know my downsetting. Yeah. And I wish I had somebody in here who knows that God knows you so well that if you just put it in his hand, yeah. he'll make a way out of no way. He'll heal your body. He'll supply your need. He'll give you joy. He'll give you power. He'll give you strength. I've been here long enough. Let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. Let me wrap this up. Because finally, I'm still in this text. When I look at the fact, y'all, that for all of us, we get frustrated. Mm hmm. Yes, we do. We get frustrated. God ain't moving. Uh huh. Which brings me to the last piece of the text as I get ready to leave you this morning. God bless your hearts. Daniel shows me that my posture for prayer must be, first of all, that I pray in harmony uh-huh with his word right secondly my second posture is that I've got to pray grounded in his will but lest I keep us too long finally y'all the last posture that I find in Daniel in this text is found in the fact that a praying Christian is one who prays anticipating God's work now, beloved, as I get ready to leave you today, let me be honest with you. Let me be transparent for a moment. So many times in my life, I told y'all, I found myself trying to rush God. I ain't by myself. God, I got some stuff I want you to do, and I want you to do it. Right now. Some things I want done. I want it done when I want it done how I want it done, when I want it done. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. To whom I want it done. Hello? Come on now. Preach JT. Preach JT. Let me be transparent. St. James, I have found myself frustrating myself. That's right. 
Because God wasn't moving like I wanted him to move. But I got to tell you all, I thank God for childhood memories. Because every once in a while, God reminds me of a reality. The reality is found in a song I remember singing as a child. The song simply said, you can hurry go. No, you just have to. Y'all gonna help me preach today, I see. You gotta trust him, give him time. No matter. Uh-huh, yeah, somebody else done heard that revelation too. He's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there. Oh, yes, he will. Don't you worry. Here's a place for somebody to say amen. He may not come. All these preachers in the choir stand today. And that's my place to close here for you today, St. James. Because when you assume the proper posture, when your prayer is in harmony with God's word, it's grounded in God's will, yes. then you can't help but stand in anticipation. Yes. Lord have mercy. For what God will do. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think Job could help me close this thing quickly. Job said, if a man die, shall he live Again. Well now, it wasn't so much the question as it was the answer. Because Job said, well now, all the days of my appointed time. Watch this. I'm going to wait, God help me, until my change comes. Now y'all, I started in this text, so let me go ahead and wrap it up in the text because in the first opening verses of chapter 9, you find Daniel praying. God, see us in the mess that we are in. See us, Lord, because it was our own rebellion that got us in the mess that we're in. It was our own disobedience that got us in the trouble that we're in. And I would I would, I would, somebody be honest with me who can say, you know, pastor, I can relate to Daniel because a lot of the trouble I got into, I got myself, come on in here, into it. But I'm so glad that Daniel did not stop by talking about the trouble. He remembered the prophecy of Jeremiah and moved to a prayer of resolve. Because in verse 15, Daniel prays, Now, Lord, you brought us out of Egypt. Now, Lord, you delivered us from our oppressors. Now, Lord, you renewed our relationship with you. Now, Lord, you turned us based on our sinfulness and wickedness. So now, Lord, if you will, turn your anger away from Jerusalem. And I got to stop right here and tell y'all I couldn't help when I saw this verse, but look at my own life. I could not help but reminisce in the fang that I've done some things that I'm not proud to talk about. Why y'all looking at me like that? Because I'm not the only one in here that can find reality in the scripture. The Bible says we all have sinned and all of us have come short of the glory of God. What I need is some real Christians who can say I haven't dotted every I. I hadn't crossed every T. Even at my best, I fell short along the way. But is there somebody in the house who can say I am so glad that he looked beyond my fault and still supplied my need? 
can I get some help here? Uh, Daniel says, uh, if you will, God, uh, turn your face on us. Uh, shine on us again. Uh, and if I could be so bold uh, as to quote our mission and our vision theme for the year, uh, God, when it comes to my life, uh, repair, uh, restore, uh, renew, uh, and refine. Uh, because I a witness can't nobody do it but him I can try a whole lot of other things but there's something about getting on your knees and telling God I realize I know I've done you wrong I've sinned and come short of your glory I hear my granddaddy now my granddaddy would say if judgment had plumbed the line we all would be graveyard sons and daughters. But I just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy that keeps on looking out for me. There's somebody here who understands that when I pray in harmony with the word and I pray in alignment with his will, then the only thing left for me to do is get ready for him to release a miracle. I got witness in the word, not for my sake, but for his glory's sake. Gives me a good time to stop and tell somebody if you're looking for a reason to rejoice, here it is right here. If you pray and you pray right and you pray according to his will, God's going to perform it not because of you, but because his name is on the line. Well, beloved, we've come to the end of another Great Awakenings broadcast, but again, it is my prayer that the word and music you have heard this Saturday morning has been a source of encouragement and empowerment to get your day off uh, to a good start. I want to take this opportunity to extend a personal invitation to you to join us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James Church is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Join us each and every Sunday morning for Sunday morning prayer at 9.30 a.m., Sunday school at 9.45 a.m., and our morning worship experience begins at 11 o'clock a.m. each and every Sunday morning. At the present time, our Bible studies are on summer break for the months of June, July, and August. We will resume Bible study in the month of September, and we invite you to join us then on Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m., and on Thursday mornings at 11.30 a.m. If you have been so blessed by this broadcast that you'd like to come and join us for worship but are in need of transportation, all you'll have to do is call our transportation department at the information that you see listed on the screen. One of our representatives will be found making contact with you as well as making arrangements to pick you up on Sunday morning for Sunday school and morning worship and get you back home safe and sound at the close of our worship experience. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you today, I'm so pleased to let you know that this broadcast is available in its entirety on audio CD as well as video DVD. All you have to do is call and ask for our media department and request the service as you see the service number listed there on the screen. Someone will be found assisting you in making sure that you receive your request in a timely and an efficient manner. As we come to the close of our time together this morning, I want to again say thank you for tuning in to the Great Awakenings broadcast. Allow me as always to say good morning, a special good morning, to the staff and residents of the Hunter Hill Nursing and Rehabilitation Center here in the city of Rocky Mountain. We say good morning to you, and as always, our prayers are with you and all those who are tuning in this morning in hospitals, nursing homes, convalescent homes, and in their personal sick homes. Our prayers are that God will continue to keep you in a perfect peace as you keep your minds stayed on Him. Until next Saturday morning, when we have this opportunity to be together again, again, I am Dr. James T. Worthy, pastor of the St. James Baptist Church, simply saying, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always. God bless.